Okay, so now we're going to go even deeper with our Stripe integration and the next step will be allowing users to use promotional coupons to have discounts for our products. So they'll be able to add a few products to the cart, go to buy now, and in the Stripe checkout session, there will be a button to add a promotional code. And this is how we are going to do it. Now, there are just a few things we need to do. First, we need to go to our checkouts controller. And here, we just need to add the line, allow promotional codes true. And this will add the, the line to add a promotional code. So here we can add a promotional code. But where are we going to actually create these promotional codes? Well, the best place to create them is, of course, the Stripe uh, dashboard. Of course, it is possible to create it via the API, but you would definitely have more management control of this in the Stripe uh, dashboard. So here I have uh, our products, and in products we have coupons. So now I will create a new test coupon. Uh, there will be a name like uh, Shopify test. Uh, will not set an ID, let uh, Stripe set an ID itself. It will be a percentage promotion, let's say 50% uh, off, duration forever. Okay, now I'm going to press the create coupon button. And we have created a coupon. If I open the coupon, I will be able to create a promotional code or many promotional codes inside the coupon. So let's, yes, let's name it friends 50. And you see we can set a lot of different additional options, but let it be just friends 50 for now. So I'm adding this promotional code. Okay. And now if I go to the uh, Stripe checkout session and apply this coupon, then you see the users that apply this coupon are going to have a 50% discount for any product. Now let's go back and add a few products to our shopping cart. I will add uh, this expensive MacBook Pro to our shopping cart and press buy now. Okay, so we have two products. I will add the promotional code, apply it, and you see the price was uh, divided by half. So I will input the card information the CVC codes and so on, and process the payment. And let's see what we get. Okay, we are redirected to the checkout. You see, we paid uh, $1,200 for the two products, and uh, we have them in our checkout. And if we refresh, our shopping cart is emptied. So, loose code. We can uh, save the changes. So, git status, git add all, git commit main. And what did we do? We allowed promotional codes for checkout. And, of course, we created the promotional codes in our Stripe dashboard. So there are a lot of options. You can create a promotional code for one product or for all the products, for one specific user or for all users and so on. Another thing that we will work now with is currencies. So let us go to our products. Okay, I will start the survey once again. And you see uh, all the products that we created previously were in US dollars. How do we know that they are in US dollars? Well, here in the view, it is just uh, a sign. It means nothing if we go to our products uh, index. You see, uh, we don't set any currency. It's just the default currency of the number to currency format. But we set uh, the currency as dollars on the Stripe level. So when we create a product, if it's like the currency USD. And now we're going to make it so that we can have different products with different currencies. Or we can have uh, one product with a few currencies. So let's say, what if we uh, don't change our product, uh, our local product, but just assign a different currency to a product? Let's say whenever we update a product's price, we will set the currency to EUR, to Euro. Let's do it. I will. Uh, change the MacBook Pro price, let's make it $3,000. We go back and yeah, here it still shows in dollars, but if we go to the cart and press buy now, 
that is play the price in euros. Why? Because uh, we created a new Stripe price with euros and assigned it to the local price. And now to have uh, better management of this, we are going to create a column with the currency for our local table of products. So rails generate migration, add the currency to products. Currency integer. Oh, my mistake, it shouldn't be integer, it should be string. Okay, I will anyway go to the migration and change it to string, like this. Okay, so it's going to be string, I save and run uh, rails db migrate. And I get some kind of error, relation products. Okay, I mistyped products, my bad. Products and rails db migrate. Okay, Rails server. And now we'll make the uh, currency editable. So we will go to our products controller and add the currency to our whitelist uh, of uh, strong params. And we will add it to our views. So here we'll just display the product price divided by 100 and separately we will display the currency. So product name, product dot currency, and product price. Okay. Now we will also go to the form and uh, add a field to be able to select the currency. Like this. Oh, and actually, it would be good to just set a default uh, currency for the uh, products for which we didn't have a currency before. So we will run RailsDB rollback. And we will say default will be USD. Okay, now we run RailsDB migrate once again. And the currency will be set USD to all the pr previous products. Okay, I'll refresh. I will uh, go back to the application. I'll go to products and you see we had a currency set for all the products, USD, and now I will try to edit the currency. So let's make it PLN, it is Polish Lottie. Let's change the price to 67800. Okay, now we'll go back and uh, try to buy this product. And you see it is still in uh, euros because previously we uh, changed the price to euros. We did not, uh, let's go to our products RB. So we did not uh, say that the currency should be the currency of our local product. So we're going to change it that the self uh, dot currency is assigned to the Stripe products currency. Okay, now we will change the price and the currency will also be updated. Let's change it to uh, something like GBP to Great British Pounds and let's make it uh, one to three. Update product, go back. Now I have this product selected. I will go to validate and I'm going to Stripe checkout. And you see, I have the price in Great British uh, or oh, Great Britain pounds. So this is how we can uh, modify our prices or actually create new prices for existing products and assign these prices in our checkout. Of course, with correct currencies. So let us save our changes. Now, uh, what? Yeah, we should also do it here. The currency should be not USD, but it should be self dot currency so that when we create a new product we will have the currency assigned correctly i will go to create a new product uh, i will say uh, uh, russian doll i will say rub price uh, 23400 go back 
I will select this product and press buy now. And what will I get? I get nothing. I get an error. Let's go to our console and see. We get this Stripe indulge request error. Only a single currency can be used uh, as line items. So I cannot have uh, two line items with different currencies. Otherwise, I will get an error. Uh, and uh, this is a good point. You shouldn't show your uh, customers prices in uh, different currencies. You should be able to allow a customer to see prices only in one currency. So keep this in mind. Now, I will remove this uh, product in Great British Pounds from our, our card. I will just try to pay for the Russian doll product. And uh, here I have 234 Russian rubles. And of course, I can add a promotional code. So let's save our changes. Git add all, git status. What have we done? We have uh, made it possible for us to uh, add a currency to a local product and to create new prices for existing Stripe products uh, through the API. So now we can uh, create different products in different currencies and check out different products in different currencies. But we cannot have one checkout for two products with different currencies. In one checkout, you can have all products with one same currency. So git commit main uh, products can have different prices, uh, prices with different currencies. Also, if uh, we have another look uh, in our application, we have just one product table where we have both the price and the currency, whereas Stripe has products that has many currencies. So this is kind of a modification we are making in educational purposes. Uh, we have one local database with products and inside we have uh, separate products and prices. And here, in our local database, one uh, product can have only one Stripe price. Now, another thing that doesn't work really beautifully in our application is that we have to input the price in cents. So we have to input uh, 500 hundreds of cents for $500. And uh, it's uh, not very nice for our users. So we are going to add the gem money that will help us to better format prices in our local Ruben Rails application. So here is this gem money rails from Ruby Money, and we will install it and see how it works. So I'm taking this gem, I will add it to our gem file and run bundle. Next, I will run a gem install. Oh. Rails generate money rails initializer. And we can open this uh, file that was created initializer slash money.rb file. So I will go to config, initializers, money.rb, and I'm going to set a default currency. It's good to always have a default currency. It will be, yes, let it be USD for now. Okay, next. Uh, Let's go, and uh, we're going to say monetize price or something. Let's see how it works. Basically, I will go to product.rb, and I will say uh, monetize price, uh, monetize price as price cents. Okay, now I will go to our products controller and also allow to input price cents, and in our product form, instead of inputting the price, I will input price cents. And let's see what it uh, gives us. Let us go to our form, and you see, it was formatted into 500.00. So let's make the price uh, $1,999. Oh, $1 I update it, and you see it was 100 updated to 199.00. I can also use this price cents in our views. So in our show, instead of showing the price, I will show the price cents. And in our index, I don't have to de delete by 100. I will just show the price cents. So 
refresh and you see the price is really human readable now. I will go back, I see all the products and it is more human readable. So I can add a few more cents here, 0.98 and please select a valid value. Okay, interesting. Now, this is actually a limitation set by our input field. So here we say a number field, but uh, we want to input something more like a text field. So I will just replace number field with text field and try once again. I will refresh the page. I will update the price sense to 199.50, update, and you see now it works. I'll go back. I will uh, select this product. I will go to buy now. And you see, I have the correct price displayed. So we have installed the, the gem money and at the moment we are using to uh, more comfortably display our prices, edit and create our prices in a more human uh, understandable way. So that's basically it. And I will now save our changes and push to Heroku. And this is it for this lesson. Please like, comment, and uh, subscribe. Yeah. <laughs>